Hello and welcome to our session. Um, today we are going to explain to you um, how you can benefit uh, more from the uh, digitalization of uh, industry. Um, we have a solution that addresses um, the major technical challenges coming with the digitalization projects, which is, which is called uh, Mesh Twin Learning. And this is something we are going to present to you today. And uh, uh, before we do that, uh, let's introduce ourselves. I am Wojasiński. I'm a senior business analyst at PGS Software. Mm. I'm involved mostly in the projects that are related to cloud technologies, to, mesh twin, mesh, uh, to machine learning and to uh, data science. And together with me is Łukasz Panusz. Hi, so my name is Luke and at PGS Software I'm holding position of Chief Solutions Architect, mostly focusing on the task that Daniel related to, so finding a way of quick appliance of technology to those complicated and complex environments and how to quickly establish ROI and drag the transformation towards industry for the dough further. Okay, so plan for today's session. We'll start with a very brief industry overview, then quick recap of the digital twin concepts uh, and how it can be applied to the um, uh, manufacturing digitalization. Then we will jump into the mesh twin layering concept and its technicalities. Uh, uh, next one, I will elaborate on the benefits you get from mesh twin learning and uh, um, our uh, experience on how it can be implemented at the facility. Um, so let's start. Um, industry uh, foreign debt o is um, a topic of discussions for uh, quite some time uh, right now and is gaining momentum over time. Um, many different uh, studies show that uh, companies are interested in it and are investing in it. Uh, right here you can see uh, results of the research Deloitte conducted. As you can see, most of the respondents believe that in next year's uh, smart factories, digitalization will be the main uh, drive, driver for the change in the industry. And people are already investing heavily in the digital factories initiatives and they are, they are going to invest more. And this, uh, this data is from uh, late 2019, so it's before Corona. Uh, right now, uh, when we experience lockdown and its consequences to the uh, supply chains and to the factories, the topic of digitalization is even more important since it enables automation and um, uh, um, simplifies things for the industry. And there are, um, there are companies that are already implementing uh, digitalization mm. solutions. Uh, and here you can see results of the, um, of the KPMG research uh, showing uh, experience of the early adopters. And even though uh, those companies uh, implemented relatively uh, simple use cases like uh, real-time uh, data visualization, they already see significant uh, benefits, improvements in most of the KPIs, and we see similar, similar things uh, in cases we are dealing with. We have experience with um, uh, topics like real-time process monitoring and automated control in the process manufacturing with the automated quality checks uh, in the discrete manufacturing or even predictive maintenance of the conveyor belts in the gold mines. And all of those companies uh, see significant improvements in their operations, uh, even if they start with relatively small use cases. And uh, most, of, uh, most of the digitalization um, initiatives starts with digital twins. Something uh, you are probably already familiar with, so this will be just a, a quick re recap what Digital Twin is. Mm. So basically, Digital Twin is just a 
digital uh, copy of the object or process from the real world. It's based on the vast amount of data from the IoT sensors, uh, from um, uh, CAD designs, etc. Uh, and it is possible to use this all of this data to improve the business performance of the process or of the machine. Mm. And mm. Uh, we see uh, four steps, four major steps in the digitalization initiatives. Mm. Uh, most of the initiatives uh, start small with digitalization of uh, single assets. So we, we create a uh, mm, digital twin of a single machine like a press or a furnace in a production line. And uh, with that digital twin, we can optimize its performance. We can implement machine learning to uh, predict failures, etc. Then when we have a few of those digital twins uh, that are um, part of the same production line, we can create a digital twin of the whole production line and optimize the performance of the whole line. Uh, if we combine those uh, production lines, digital twins of production lines, together with digital twin of the supply chain at the factory, we can create the digital twin of the whole factory and optimize its performance. And ultimate step is the factory network where we have uh, many factories uh, connected with each other and in, uh, exchanging the data. Uh, and uh, in this case, you can optimize the performance of the whole system. So as you can see, the benefits coming with dig digitalization are Mm, uh, growing together with the scale of the initiatives. Mm. And in the, mm, in the real world, we, you can uh, see uh, various types of digital twins from very simple ones like uh, component twins. In our case, uh, let's take a power plant as an example. Uh, component twin could be a mm, single rotor in the steam turbine. A uh, more complex digital twin, would, which would be combination of the part twins, would be uh, the whole turbine, so the uh, single product. And it is possible to, to create twins not only of the physical objects, but also of processes. Mm. So in, in our case, it would be mm, operations of the field engineers maintaining the uh, facility mm. uh, uh, with the digital twin of the process we can optimize the process in order to prevent any unwanted uh, interruptions in the operations of the whole uh, facility and the ultimate step would be combination of the previous uh, elements into the system twin so the whole uh, the whole power plant and uh, with that you can uh, visualize, optimize the performance of the whole system. But like uh, most of the game-changing concepts, uh, digitalization uh, comes with its unique set of challenges. Uh, we see business challenges. Uh, companies have to decide what, how they are going to approach the digitalization, what's their strategy. Then it is important to uh, identify initiatives the uh, company want to pursue, uh, prioritize them, and the select one, the one the, the company is going to start with, which is not always an easy task. Mm. Then we have technical challenges. Uh, uh, there are challenges like selecting proper technologies that will be the best fit for the scenario we are uh, dealing with. Uh, selecting the proper architectures and uh, when we are dealing with the existing facilities which is uh, most often the case mm, to uh, it introduces even more uh, complexity and challenges because existing facilities means we have modern machines that are already mm, fitted with iot sensors uh, that are uh, ready for digitalizations and uh, we have uh, old but yet functionally 
machines that requires retrofitting. Uh, so we have different communication standards, we have different ways those machines um, store the data. Uh, another um, challenge is connectivity. We have a vast amounts of data and we have to uh, transfer it, so uh, high capacity internet connection is required. And that's uh, not, not often uh, available at existing facilities. So, um, the digitalization gives great benefits, but it's not easy task. And there is a mesh twin learning concept we uh, uh, developed at the PGS software that we believe uh, addresses most of those technical challenges. So, Lukas, could you elaborate on that? Yeah, as we all heard uh, by introduction from Rafael and also on the previous presentation, the biggest challenge actually in adopting new technologies and those IT at uh, manufacturer sites are uh, dependency on newest trends uh, where interconnection and appliance of machine learning, big data, edge computing and rest uh, bring significant uh, troubles, let's say. Uh, across the um, experiences with our customers, we often faced difficult things on different levels, either on the process side or on actual implementation where different business cases were required. So if we we'll look at the entire concept from high level, it was taken um, from the simple uh, connection of, of the technologies, which we'll see on the next slide. Um, so we decided to uh, sit down and compare various business cases around industry overall, what kind of the technologies were applied and uh, how we can even squeeze more out of it. Uh, in result, we've came up with um, conclusion and a system that we called Mesh Twin Learning, which connects the data science with uh, IoT sensors and gates with entire concept of digital twins in order to lower down the adoption level. How it's done, you may wonder. Uh, it's quite straightforward concept. So on the next slide, um, we can see that for every production line, for every nest, we are able to plug-in edge computer or IoT gateway that will be collecting locally all the data from the sensors in order to uh, provide insight into local machine learning model. What is important here, instead of transporting back and forth those vast amounts of data to the data center to take the decision what should happen now, we are deploying small machine learning model that is um, basically optimized for part of sub process, for example, bakery of steel in, in the furnace to find local optimizations that will give the best quality reduction of waste or, or energy saving. Uh, as we saw on Daniel's presentation, those energies, energy savings, even if decreased by a couple percent, can bring significant reduction of the cost, for which we also have a case study later on. Uh, what is the most um, important in that concept, all the, of the local machine learning uh, models, every cycle, for example, 10, 15 minutes, are exported back to the cloud or data center to the central place, where for a similar part of the processes, they are starting to compete between each other. And the one with the best results for a given optimi optimization wins, and it's back propagated to all of the production lines and factories. Thanks to that, all factories are running exactly at the same level. And even uh, if the operator with uh, bigger experience will make manual adjustments, we are able to catch the trend and propagate that across the factories without notice letters, which we know all know that are taking long time to propagate between the factories. Thanks to that, um, we are able to quickly recognize where improvements into processes uh, are 
um, could be made. And also thanks to micro optimization method, which is used here, we are able to continually uh, adopt to the uh, different factors like uh, environmental ones or supply chain or uh, for the uh, some kind of the savings pretty much from the high level that's it great mm. so let me now uh, elaborate on the major benefits of the mesh twin learning mm. how it can help your company mm, to improve performance and what challenges does it address? First challenge is interoperability. So as I said before, when we are dealing with uh, um, existing facilities, we, we have to deal with uh, old machines uh, that are retrofitted, modern machines. Uh, um, they have different communication standards and it can get even worse as, as Daniel said, when you want to connect two different factories, uh, Mm, the, it could be a horror, mm, uh, basically. And uh, how mesh twin learning addresses that issue? We have uh, edge devices, and each edge device can be can have a, a configuration dedicated for for the machine we are prepared it for. Mm. So it is able to communicate with the machine, and it is able to communicate with the uh, central data and um, machine learning repository using the common standards. It acts as a translator. This way we are able to uh, connect uh, different uh, machines, different factories together and they can talk together. So it, uh, it creates a common language between them. It's better, better for performance monitoring and it's better decision making. With the um, central data storage for the whole system, so uh, for the fo whole factory network, in the most extreme case, uh, it is possible to create um, BI dashboards that provide you with the insights from the top level helicopter view on the whole system uh, and drill down to the level of the single asset. With that, uh, with that capability, you can uh, monitor performance uh, much better than normally. And managers and um, engineers responsible for the process uh, can make informed decisions in a matter of uh, minutes instead of um, relying on, the gut, on their gut feeling and experience. So um, uh, it's, it's a great benefit. It's maximizing performance and uh, faster innovation. Uh, and uh, there are two major components, or even three major components of the mesh twin learning that are important here. First one is, again, the central data repository. It is like a goldmine for your data scientists and for your uh, engineers responsible for the uh, optimization of processes. Uh, second one is the cloud with its uh, modern, uh, very advanced analytics uh, tools and virtually unlimited um, computing power. Uh, with uh, those solutions, it is possible to um, very quickly analyze a lot of data and derive insights at the uh, very high pace. And the third one is the uh, simulation engine. Mm -hmm your uh, people can test the, the ideas for the optimization on the uh, simulation engine before they apply it to the real processes. In this case, we eliminate the risk of breaking anything in the real world. Uh, if something doesn't work, it's fine. We, uh, we learned it with absolutely uh, no risk. It, if it works, uh, we can easily deploy the change to the um, edge devices which are controlling the physical processes uh, and this way um, innovate much faster. There is no risk so uh, people are um, uh, willing to try new approaches. Uh, um, yeah, the most, uh, maybe not the most important but the most impressive 
uh, benefit of the um, machine learning are self-optimizing factories. As Booker said, uh, uh, in machine learning we have uh, this uh, competition between different uh, machine learning models and it's happening automatically and 24 seven. So uh, your, um, the system becomes more and more performant uh, over time. Uh, um, and the best, the best machine learning models are, are deployed very often to the whole system, not just a single factory. And easier change management. Mm -hmm. When we have a complex system and uh, digital factory or is, is such system and uh, mm, factory network even more uh, mm, complicated one, it is quite a challenge to manage changes in such systems. But uh, with mesh twin learning, we have a central repository of data, but we have also a central repository of the um, edge devices configuration, uh, machine learning models, and registry of the um, machines. So we know exactly uh, what elements the whole system consists of and what elements work, uh, have to work together. So it is very easily to uh, um, correctly uh, select the changes and apply it to the um, uh, correct uh, machine or edge device. Um, it's much faster than uh, manual processes uh, with uh, various uh, um, decision uh, gates. And uh, right now I'm going to uh, show you our approach to the implementation of the uh, mesh twin learning solution to the um, factory or even to the single uh, production line first and then few production lines. Because Mm, it all starts with the assessments. We, we run the workshop where we learn what are your business needs, what are the challenges, uh, what uh, machines uh, we are dealing with, what's the infrastructure and what's the data. Once we know it, uh, we identify the use cases and we select the um, so-called uh, low-hanging fruits. So the, the use cases where we can uh, relatively easily um, provide um, business benefits. We select uh, uh, such use cases and implement uh, the solution on a small, small scale. So for just for a one production line, for example, once we are sure it works as it's supposed to, it's time to introduce the competition. So we um, implement the same use case on a uh, few production lines and uh, that's where uh, the competition starts. That's where you see the self-optimization and uh, uh, those micro adjustments. And uh, once we are ready with that, we can use our framework to implement it on a greater scale to the whole factory or over time, even to the whole uh, uh, factory network, if that's what we are dealing with. One moment. Mm. Now, I would like to present to you two examples. From is, one is uh, from the automotive industry. Uh, the case here is uh, optimiz optimization of the uh, production of the car chassis. Uh, we dealt with the highly digitalized uh, case. So. Mm -hmm. There were seven factories, and in each factory, we uh, there were uh, over ten thousand digital twins. So it was possible to control the whole pro uh, process end to end. And with introduction of uh, the mesh twin learning and its uh, self optimization, uh, it was possible to significantly reduce the waste, uh, increase the uh, productivity of the uh, whole facility. Uh, so that's the one case. And another one 
is from the agriculture industry. It might sound quite exotic, considering that this is a smart manufacturing conference, but in our case, we were dealing with the farm, potato farm that was really uh, almost 100% uh, automated. So there were uh, IoT sensors monitoring uh, soil, mm. uh, soil hydration level and mineralization level. There were drones monitoring uh, plants uh, state and drones applying, automatically applying uh, fertilizer exactly there with, where it uh, needed to be applied, not to the whole field. Uh, so in this case, we uh, implemented the mesh twin learning to 29 fields. You can uh, consider those 29 fields, 29 pr production lines, for instance. And with mesh twin learning, we managed to improve the performance of this potato farm by 25%. Uh, uh, it was 25% uh, better than farms around it. So as you can see, um, it is possible to uh, gain a lot with uh, digitalization and mesh twin learning is the way to, uh, way to address uh, most of the challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, what is important here uh, with those two cases, we are showing just an example of how it can be uh, applied and what kind of the benefits it brings. But looking at what is happening across the industry after the pandemic or during the pandemic situation, uh, we started to think what is the next step, how the industry for the toll can even evolve further, taking into consideration high adoption of the digital twins and aims to introduce even more automation. So if we'll um, think about the processes that are well described and measurable um, in conjunction with uh, the next step, which is pretty much augmentation, um, if you will change. Um, so with the augmented re reality where employees can virtually manage things through the set of the sensors, actuators and proper visualization of the state of the machine and production, uh, we are ending up with a situation with the prop where the proper um, automation using machine learning and AI with distributed environments pretty much allow us to move away from the trad traditional production lines and jump into the future where uh, machine learning takes um, over the responsibility over basic tuning and management systems over the production lines while, while the operators can pretty much work from anywhere and manage uh, the settings and gain control remotely over what is produced. And in our eyes, this is the future to, uh, towards which we are also um, going with our concept and the technologies that we are applying across the industry for the toe. And from our side for today, I think that will be all. So thank you very much everyone for the attention and maybe let's jump to the questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Luke. Thank you very much, uh, Rafal. So do we have questions from the audience? Dorda, are you seeing any questions in the panel? I'm not right now. Nope. Yeah, so I have um, a question. So. Um, I mean, there's a, I mean, depending on the case, there are a lot of data, there's a lot of data to be processed. Um, and so you are optimizing the di digital twin and try to propagate these optimizations into the shop floor, for example. Um, but if you have a lot of parameters, how do you, um, how do you consider the, the robustness of a configuration? So if you have a standard deviation in, in the virtual world that could have a great impact in the real world, you know, how do you consider that? Uh, so there are seven, uh, several levels of actually managing that. 
First of all, as I mentioned, all the data are typically treated locally. So machine learning models are learned to actually recognize the pattern for well-defined subprocess. Even this one can have multiple over hundreds or even sometimes thousands of parameters. But mm -hmm. pretty much due to the fact that we are going against the uh, micro-optimization model uh, taken directly from the Taguchi methods, uh, we are focusing on the single variables which are allowing us to find uh, honey spot, hot spot uh, for a given parameter for which we are optimizing. Mm -hmm. And uh, in size, if you will think about the local machine learning models, those are something like email size or something similar. So it's easy to export them back to the cloud and check against others which are doing the similar job. Mm -hmm. Of course, in batch processes, we are able to send over the uh, compressed uh, data directly from the sensors to uh, train and see what are the outcomes over the digital farm in the cloud and check whether we are going into the right direction in terms of overall data science and finding the, those right optimizations and maybe there is a step back to find uh, another path and another way. But uh, if you will combine all those checkpoints and feedback loops all together, this is pretty much uh, allowing us to control that process and be able to continuously uh, go towards the right direction and be resilient to, the, to those multiple levels and factors. Okay, uh, one more question the panel with the request to, uh, for a quick answer because we are, uh, it's already 10.08. Um, uh, the question is one, um, the investment it takes and the ROI, I'm sure that um, it's pretty complex to, to say something about the investments you need to um, uh, take um, regarding this case, but do you have any example regarding an return of investment? I think that so, is the core of the question. Uh, so as uh, we presented in the cases, of course, every example is different. And that's why first step is uh, basically around the assessment and finding those low hanging fruits to quickly show the benefits and start producing the ROI. But in terms of car manufacturer, introduction of MTL took something between six, seven months. And right away, we started to show the optimization, which even if you will think about a couple percent of energy saving, in terms of the year saving brings tons of, of money back to the organization. So uh, yeah, this is uh, the best answer I can give without the specifics right now. Okay, so thank you so much, Luke and Rafa for your presentation. Thank you.